in a world in crisis. Can three idiots find hope in the darkest of places? Will love conquer all, or will hate win out in the end? This is a show called Hate. Welcome to our show called Hate, a podcast in which we explore love, hate, and everything in between in such a greater meaning and perhaps a little perspective. I'm John. I am Nick. I am also Chris. Good. Hello, John. Oh, welcome. this is always a delight, isn't it? I'm glad we can... Welcome to my house. Welcome to my fun house. Yes. That, that's a really cool term. You should coin that. I don't think that's ever been coined. No. You should put a sign on the door saying fun house. Welcome to the madhouse. With like really sinister music in the background. <laughs> Speaking of houses, though, go on. Oh, I was. Segue. Thank you. That was pretty good. Today, in fact, not two hours prior, uh, I was in a house, my house, the house which Lucy and I have bought. And the congratulations. House? Thank you. Thank you. It's you very built. Very exciting indeed. And um, house that love built. We we were meeting... and build and hate technically. <laughs> oh my god, that's load bearing love. <laughs> um, but no, it's it's very exciting. I'm feeling I'm feeling full of energy and, and vim. It feels Piss like... and vinegar. And <laughs> at first, I was just full of vinegar. <laughs> no, it just it's good. Like it feels it feels exciting because we met the builder and he didn't laugh at us when we said what we wanted to do. And uh, yeah, I'd be afraid of that because it's that age old thing of wanting to be like savvy while at the same time. Like being beholden to the tradesman's knowledge. Yeah. So you don't you you can very easily make a tit of yourself mm. in that situation. Yeah. Um, and look like a greenhorn. To a coin greenhorn, a which term yes. that I introduced you to last episode. I think I think the thing is also it's like when we tell people that we've just bought a house and we say, and they're like, oh, are you going to get any work done? And we go, oh yeah, we're gonna we want to knock a wall down. We want to kind of like. And that's when the advice starts coming out. And there's a lot of advice. And and also people say, like, ah, but you haven't considered X, Y. And everyone keeps saying all these things you haven't thought of. You don't know I haven't thought of it. Well, well, quite, yeah. I might have thought of it, but I want the ceiling to collapse. (laughs) Yeah. But also, like, we generally have the idea that, like, we wouldn't hire a bad builder. Or at least I'd hope we wouldn't hire a bad builder. So even if, like, we scrawled on a napkin with, like, a crayon (laughs) and we said, we want the house to look... You mean, like, the scripts that you give me for the comics? Oh, Nick, they're never that coherent. Like, <laughs> you dream of napkins. Oh, God, if you want to write for Big Punch Studios, all you'll need is a crayon. <laughs> but no, the, the long and short, what I am trying to get across is, like, if you say to the builder, I'm not a building professional, you are a building professional. And he'd probably go like, You yes, surprise me, John. Yes, John. Yes, do John. go on. Yeah. Uh, you have but but I'd that. say, like, we're kind of imagining this, and you do like a doodle, and he'd go like, oh, okay, I'm now actually going to make sense of that. I'm yeah. not just going to draw a child's drawing no. of a, a house. Like, that's the whole point, isn't it? Like, no one's expected to know this because that's a whole career to know it. So when I tell someone, oh, we're planning to knock a wall down, it's not on me to know about load-bearing girders and structural RSJs and all this. That's not on me. I just hire a good builder and I can do that. And then it's then that's it. Don't give me the chitter chatter in my ear. But I think that's just what was really that's very good. Yeah. That's very, isn't it? Yeah, I think we'll be there. But that's what was really just kind of pleasant about it because he was a really nice guy, and he he just kind of listened. And we said we want to do this. I want to help the skeleton and kind of the garden. yeah. What did he say about the slide? Yeah, I need to put my figurines. <laughs> <laughs> I, want... I liked buying transformers. Figures. I want a sex slide. <laughs> Basically, every, everything we said kind of ended with a slight. Inflection. Where we, were, where we were like, and yeah, but John, you have an inflection when you answer the phone. Do I? <laughs> Hello. This Hello. Is, this, was, this was always very funny when we used to phone you. Hello, Rev. All right. Could, <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, it's me. Yeah. How could it possibly be you in this tiny box? <laughs> do you find you still do that when you you call someone and you know that everyone uses mobiles and you know that everyone has like caller recognition and it's like a call um. I know I call up my dad or something. I'll say like, uh, "Hey, it's me." Like, yeah. "Hi." Oh, it's me. Hello. You know, of course it's you. You, you still it, just yeah. kind of start it somehow, don't you? Because you can't just go straight into it. Like, you answer the phone. So the deal is, you know, I feel like you just go, "Hello, it's me." But I don't. I don't. I feel like I'd be stupid if I said, "Hello, it's Nick," because obviously they know it's Nick. Which, Which Nick? 
I said that the other day to someone who knew it was me because of caller ID. And I said, hey, it's Nick. And they went, I know. Yeah. And I was like, oh, now I feel like a tit. Well, the thing is, when certain people phone me, Holton, mm. I just answer Ignore it. it. And they just go, <laughs> what? <laughs> Even if I've not spoken to him for months. But that is part of a charm, though. That's like your, your thing. Well, my brother wants that we, that we, uh, if we met now we would never be friends I didn't want to, I didn't, thing, I didn't want to say before. it it comes the idea that now because you survived the crucible of secondary school the two mm. of you are just locked in a in a blood rage until you know death your, your death finally releases you basically pretty much yeah that's good Yeah. sorry I interrupted you there my brother once uh, dared himself to answer the next phone call he got with what's the situation and he did it but it that's was intense it was our mum oh. so it wasn't that exciting oh yeah did but, did she know what the situation was? She sort of just glossed over it and just carried on talking. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Everything about that anecdote is really anticlimactic. The thing is, isn't your uncle also called Nick Angel? Yeah, he is, yeah. Yeah. Nice. So there's I a situation where you might have to say, it's, it's, this, Nick. it's this Nick. Well, classically, whenever we used to have family gatherings and both Nicks were there, I would be called Arbuthnot. Not a name I chose. I can't think why. Arbuthnot. Uh, we're just, sorry, we're just kind of digesting... Yeah, it's not fine. dead air, we're just kind of thinking Drink about it. Drinking it, no, no, I'm sure all our listeners are also at this point digesting that. Let's give them some time. Well, because we, uh, because Nick and I live together, Rayman, as you may be aware, uh, uh, yeah, a- oh, yes. apparently we have a very similar phone voice. Yes, apparently. Which I find... According to... Air, all like, my family members. Oh, right. And all mine as well. Well, they, they assume members, it's yeah. your, your each other's they go, oh, hello, voices. Nick, or hello, John, and it's not. Oh, okay. Maybe that's just... Badmanship. But I think you'd know. Badmanship. I think you'd know your way around it because Nick would ask a question like, or we'd just say, hello. And I'd be like, hello. Hello. Rev. Rev. Hello. I think I just. Oh, yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I just. I was always just genuinely surprised when. That anyone would call when the phone rang. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was like, I was like what, what's, what's happening? He's in the hospital. Yeah. Like, why? Again. Mm. What's wrong with him? Something's happened. Are you down a well? Welcome to a show called Hate. Uh, if you're not familiar with the format, format where format is king, format is format is king. We've that's, always said it. That's a t-shirt. We'll yeah. get that. Format is king. Bat and bastard um, cheese. We'll get those made up. <laughs> we should. We should do it. <laughs> we should do that. Bastard cheese episode one. Do, do you think we peaked with episode one? I think we peaked with episode two. Episode two was. Actually... I go back to episode two quite a lot and I laugh. Oh, that's sad. It, oh, it is sad. I didn't say it was cool. No, there's there's the champagne episode. That was a good one, John, good. which John felt the need to apologise for. <laughs> and I subsequently retracted John's apology. Yes. Have we... We, we need to complete the champagne trilogy. Yeah. Oh, basically, yeah. Trilogy. Well, we're drinking wine, you and I, at the moment. But I'm drinking water. Yeah. Yeah. Because I'm what you might describe as a problem, problem drinker. Problem drinker. Um, well, in my defence, it's my birthday tomorrow. Yes, indeed, yeah. That doesn't so, defend John, though. No. I just got a new job. Well, whatever. Oh, yeah, John got a new job. Well, he got a new job a few days ago. I signed the contract today. And you've been drinking solidly since then, and it's still <laughs> a problem. <laughs> drinking since the interview. <laughs> Leaving my current job was not a problem. <laughs> <laughs> or voluntary. <laughs> um... But no, it's like it just feels like stuff is good right now. Yes, I feel I'm not going to have enough hates to talk about because I'm I'm riding a high at the moment. Oh, oh. should we do some hates? Let's we'll do tell it. you what. Should I finish that introduction, which I never quite managed? Oh, okay. Oh, is there more? Oh. All I was going to say is that if you're not familiar with a show called Hate, welcome to the show. The simple premise is every week we bring a subject of hate and a subject of love to the table for discussion, and then we all cast ill-informed judgment on it decide whether it's worthy of a relevant emotion. And also, we take hate mail and love, love letters. letters, which is love really letters. good. Um, we didn't come up with that. Who came up with that? I think third parties have come up with that. Yeah, better, more yeah. talented more, people More creative than us. people. People who some have been saying, many, in fact, that should be on this show. Yeah, but I, instead of us. To, yeah, we don't listen to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but we're here, so you're stuck with us. Yeah, suck it up. Uh, well, if you would like to engage with our loving and greatly respected... Fan community. Oh, yeah, yes, yes. <laughs> Suck it up. Uh, you can join in on Facebook. We have a Facebook page and a Facebook group. Just look for a show called Hate. And we're also on Twitter. And you can join in using hashtags show called Love and show called Hate to send us those topics for discussion. We don't check them, but hey, let's do it. <laughs> yeah. just, just, just tweet them. In all honesty, the Facebook the Facebook group is where the action is. It's flourishing. Happening. It seems the to Facebook, be where it's at. But then let's be honest, who uses Twitter anymore? It's yeah. just a garbage fire. Oh, it, it is. Yeah. My life is so... This isn't even a love. This is just a fact. My life is objectively better since yes, I stopped looking at Twitter. Twitter. Yeah. Me too. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I'm, so, I'm so much happier. Oh, that's good. 
It's weird. Well, I know. I know you use it. Too, I can't have a note. You're wearing a shirt and sweatpants at the moment, John. Look how happy I am. <laughs> <laughs> Drinking wine and it's a work night and you've got work tomorrow. But hey, on no one here room. is judging. I'm. I'm not judging. I am, I am internally. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Yes, very Who's much got a hate? hate? I've got a hate. Who's got a hate? Give Go us a for hate. it. So um, this is an old hate that I <laughs> scabbed over. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That has been fermenting in in the in the notes app on my phone. But um, you know, ages ago there was that. Megan Merkel girl. Oh, is that her name? Megan Markle. Yes. Markle. Megan Markle. See, part of it is that I don't even like care enough to know her name. Um, and I saw on the front page of one of the rubbish newspapers, which could be a hate in its own right, that it made a big thing, big headline of the fact that when she met the Queen, she curtsied. Uh, uh, okay. It's like, this is a big story. Big story, everyone. So what are you doing? Question. Yeah, hit me. Uh, was that v- viewed... In the in the rags, as bad or good? Good, good. And this is what annoys me, right? Because it's like you're drawing attention to something that someone has done that is generally considered to be what you probably should do when you're in the presence of the queen. Yes, probably. So, and also maybe just par for the course. Like, okay, so what? So, so what's your angle? Why are you drawing such massive headlinic? That's not a word. Attention could be to. To her doing this this really obvious everyday thing. I know why it is, John and Chris. I know why. Because they want... I was they an want... afterthought there, yeah. by the way. Yeah. I was very much an afterthought there. Hesitantly got it in. Yeah. Um, because they want to put someone on blast for not doing that at a later date. They're, se- they're setting up this patriotic, like, cast that everyone must be in. And they reinforce it by rewarding the, the the unrewardable, the unneeding to be rewarded, so that when Jeremy Corbyn doesn't sing the national anthem, they can slam him. That's what it's all about. It's negatively constructed positive feedback. Well, it's funny you should say that, because at the opening of Parliament, um, I think last year, Jeremy Corbyn didn't bow to the Queen, and everyone went Kate shit. Off. Yeah. Uh, and apparently, it's protocol not to bow to the Queen. <laughs> In that scenario, so Theresa May was actually the one in the wrong. Brilliant. As it as it goes. So it's, there you go. It's like it's like when um, uh, when Obama first came into the White House, and yeah. you know Fox News were looking for every conceivable reason to criticise him. Of course, as if they needed a reason. They just hated him. Uh, at one point, it's like he made a public appearance, and the thing, like the the news story they conjured out of nowhere, was that he wasn't wearing. Uh, a lapel pin, just like a little pin badge of the American flag. And last time I checked, that's not a uniform. Like you don't have no. to wear that. And then it cuts back. Like, to everyone stu- in America doesn't wear that. But then it cuts back to the studio, <laughs> and you can damn well guarantee that every presenter is wearing an American. <laughs> so, is that Fox News? Yeah. Shock. Well, that's barely Fox that's barely News. a thing. I was this sort of thing, and uh, I saw it, someone someone pointed out is that you could not make this up as a kind of like satire. But someone has decided that wearing a poppy wasn't respectful enough. So they were wearing a whole suit made of poppies. Made of poppies. Made of opium. I think it's and like they where, were high it, as fuck! <laughs> but it's like, it's like the idea is like, where do you stop it? And I think that's the thing with like, you, you know, if you said that like <laughs> Meghan, Meghan Markle lay down on the ground and crawled like a dog towards the Queen. Yeah, squeezed, <laughs> squeezed out a tod onto her shoe. <laughs> 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 Meghan Markle let the Queen kick her repeatedly and everyone goes thank you thank you thank you Mark thank, oh, thank you Mark may have another this is protocol right <laughs> bam <laughs> that's the thing I mean like the logic is that is the most uh, referential de- uh, no deferential, deferential thing you could possibly do so how could you ever live up to it no yeah, one could true. ever be that good Very true. We, we live in a world where everyone is outraged about everything yeah and the and the it's only going to get worse because the media play up to it, and so do the political parties now. Yeah. To be honest, they they know there was something this week. I think Jeremy Corbyn acknowledged that it was International Women's Day before Theresa May had had a chance to say anything, and then she stood up and went, "I think that's what's called mansplaining." What? Because he'd mentioned it before she had. That's not no. She doesn't know what mansplaining is. That's just stupidity on her so part. So it's just so. like, oh, why do we need to? That's like Mate, hearing... Why do we need to stir people up about everything at the moment? 
That's the problem I have. Everyone is so upset about everything. I think it's, it's, it's we do like... host a podcast called a show called Hate. Yeah, but you know what I mean. We we do we we're do... taking hate back there. That's what your whole thing people. was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we're privatizing hate. Yeah, the whole point is is that is that we that we come to this in a def, in a in a what's the word? We don't care sort of way. But we do it in a humorous way. I mean, I'll go. I often listen back to this podcast and I think I can't remember talking about that. Yeah, because it's like it's because it's, it's so it's memorable. Been digested. <laughs> Because, <laughs> it's, because it's because it's so memorable. The best no, but, memories no, but, are the ones that stay with you. <laughs> but people, people say to me, "Oh, what did you talk about on the podcast?" I can't don't know. know. Can't remember. No, I mean, be honest. Often. When you guys start talking, I just check out. Yeah. I don't know what you're on about. But, but the point the point is, this is a very light hearted show about things that bother us day to day. That's the reality of it. Gripes. Gripes. Everyone's so angry about everything, and it's just come on. Do you, do you it's ever... just going to get worse. I think this is this is my problem with it is that all, all this this positive praise this is is so transparent as to why they're setting it up. It's so that they can trip mm. someone else up later to get genuinely enraged about something but people that's are irrelevant. For it. People are falling for it. Yeah, exactly. Hook, line, and sinker. I think like where where does it end? Like are, are people you know? And, and I don't think it's conspiracy theory to to blame it on. The press. No, about the way it is the press. It's cultivating this kind of like culture. But what is the end state? Like, if it's accelerating and it's getting worse, like, are people gonna? Are people getting wise? It's like, people aren't going to the newspapers anymore for news. Like, they know their audiences are dwindling. No, they, they're are... going for rage. So, is it like? Is they it like the last annoyed. dying scream of a very angry industry, or is it? Is it, you know, we're, we're not learning anything and we're just getting worse and worse and worse? Well, I think certainly Daily Mail readers go to it to be annoyed. It's, it's almost like they are as annoyed by the newspaper as the people, as its detractors are, you know, because they go to it to see what awful thing Jeremy Corbyn has done so that they can just stay on top of how angry they know they need to be and mm. how supportive they know they need to be of the Queen. Like... I get it. Let's not disrespect anyone here. Let's not disrespect the Queen. I'm not I'm not pro disrespecting the Queen here. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about like just this isn't a big deal. Being respectful to the Queen and maybe singing or not singing the national anthem or curtsying or not curtsying and this is such old fashioned bollocks that doesn't matter anymore. If you punch the Queen in the face that's quite bad. Yeah, that's quite that bad. Might, that I think might, everyone would agree. Don't punch any old women in the face. Don't do no, that. No, no. But would that's say, exactly that's what I would it. Say. That's my point. Don't exactly. do it. I would say treat every... Try to avoid it, punching old ladies in the face, unless it's absolutely necessary. If, if the, that's if, all I'd say. If the thought goes into your head, oh, maybe I'll punch this old lady in the face, mm, maybe, mm. like, let that other voice go, no. Maybe just let that one speak. I think also, bit. like, you know, context is, is everything. And, you know, if, if, that, if that old In my defence, really she did it. slag off my opinion, yeah. that old lady. So oh, she, she did disagree she did, with you. She yeah. had it coming. She started oh, no. it. That's all I'll she say. Started it. Your Honour. Treat, why not treat every old woman like you would the Queen? Yeah, you know. Why don't you devise a currency with their face on it and try, <laughs> and try to sell it? I mean, oddly enough, like uh, I was thinking about. Uh, yeah, sorry, I, I, I gestured just... wi- wildly at. Uh... That's the problem. When you got a very reflective screen behind yeah, you. Yeah, it, it was a ricochet uh, shot into the <laughs> back of your head. Uh, yeah, no. Um, we saw something about Meghan Markle. I genuinely want to call her Merkel now. Meghan Markle. Uh, Meghan Markle. Oh, uh, Merkel's that. You're thinking German of Angela lady. Merkel. Yes, Angela yes. Merkel, yeah. The German I hope Chancellor. Her and Harry are very happy together. Yes. <laughs> but uh, I... she's a cool lady, actually, Angela. Yeah, she's Merkel. pretty badass, yeah. And frankly, our, our royal family's pretty German anyway. That was, yeah. That's true, yeah. yeah. They're probably all related. But no, it's saying like she's going to be baptised. Megan is. Yeah, in the UK. She has been baptised. Has now, been baptised, yes. Is this ne- necessary well, to marry a prince? There's a question. We're looking to Raymond now for answers. Why would you? Well, the answer is yes to your question. She's also the first woman, um, I believe, of mixed race who's entered the, our royal family. Okay. Which is cool, I guess. I, you know, it sort of yeah. doesn't register with me. It's not really a. Thing. And she's also divorced. Uh, which gasp. We, well, yeah, I know. Which used to be a no go. Yeah, that was why. Now yeah, was lots why... of people are holding that up. Is like, isn't it great how far we've come? We haven't gone that far, though, have we? We haven't, though. Honest. I, but, but divorced people get remarried all the time. Sometimes the same person. Yes, it's funny, isn't it? It's, all, it's, it's almost family. like it's almost like people are flawed. It's almost like people are nuanced and flawed and might have like 
make mistakes and do wonderful things and find happiness in different places. It's it's really weird, isn't it? It's it like, is so strange. Yeah. God. Uh, I think I like. <laughs> I think, as I discussed in a previous episode, this wine tastes good. Yes, it is. It is lovely. Uh, and that's think, your flaw, <laughs> and that's and that's my love, and, th- and that's my I'm nuanced. <laughs> Get out of my house. Who are you? Uh, but no, I think, as I said in a previous episode, uh, the idea of royalty kind of makes me uncomfortable. Yeah. At the same time, you have talked about. At the same time, you know, it doesn't make me massively angry. But I think yeah. I don't care. That's the thing. Yeah. It's, I don't spend any time worrying one way or the other about royalty. Well, and this is what annoys me about this whole thing. It's, it's, it's made into such a big deal because it's becoming less relevant. The newspapers need to find that last vestige of, like, hatred that they can twist and yeah. turn into polarised well, opinions. What, what, one thing I, did, I didn't want to say is that... The um, thing I found very weird is the way, kind of like, the press and, like, our pop culture kind of, like, absorbs and digests like the love interests of royalty oh sure so it's like uh, uh kate yes uh it's like genuine question like when did you last hear her say anything well i don't really watch the news but 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 it's interesting it's like the moment she became a public figure mm. uh, it's like she's been molded into this idea of the perfect princess yeah and it's like she's more vital to our culture as a silent yeah. image than she is as a person. Well, think about how valuable Diana still is. Yeah. And she can't talk at all. No. There's a Funko Pop coming out of Princess Diana. What? Tell No. What? Yeah, I know, right? Is that a... That, no, I'm not joking. Really? Yeah. That's kind of weird. Who's going to buy that? Who is that? Oh, people. I know who's going to... Sorry, yeah, why do I say thing is, it's thing is, um, the royal family is more popular away from England than it is within England. Yes. It's a major exit. And it's not unpopular in England. No, no, still a lot of... No, it's certainly not unpopular. No. 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 I just think, like, I hope... You've got to hope that, like, as people, as couples, if you can strip away all the limelight and the wealth and pomp, that they're actually happy. Because otherwise, I, I so. think it's got to be bloody miserable. Yeah. If, for the ladies, if they're getting... Because it's like Megan. It's like... Her entire life is getting poured over. Yeah. And it's like, it's like you have to give up so much. I mean, obviously, you're going to live a very privileged life. But at the same time, it's like you have to give up your identity because she's becoming a princess. And now it's like she's even being baptised. Yeah. You know, because it's like we're washing that American sin out of her. Sin out of her. You know, she, we're going to make her. You know, it's like they hold her down and they tattoo the Union Jack on her back, back. or something yeah. like that. Yeah, back. Yeah. <laughs> back. I don't know. It is weird. It is. Weird. I, feel, I do feel sorry. For I don't think. It, I just don't. I know people will, but I don't feel strongly one way or the other. No, I, I'm, I'm with you on that. Are we getting a national holiday? No, it's on a Saturday. Uh, it's on the day of the FA Cup final. That could swing me into the pro camp if I got a holiday out of it. Yeah. Oh, if I, yeah, definitely. If I like Prince William's wedding, that was a great day. Yeah. Um, Spent all day in the pub. Yeah, we did. We went. We, I, I had a, I had a bap from a cafe that no longer exists, and it had mould on it. Okay, that doesn't sound. Great. No, but it's a story. Yeah, you know, well, it is. Like, it like, certainly did happen. It's an anecdote. Good. No, I agree with whatever your original point was. We went was. way off topic, but let's just be annoyed about it. Do you want to... Uh, Conclude? Uh, kind of, yeah, bring it back, I guess. Basically, just like... that. Just stop trying to create situations where you can be angry at people. Why can't we just coexist? Why stop sensationalising the mundane. Yeah, and yes, in fact, that's wow. a really good way of That was good, it. wasn't it? That could be the episode the title. Sensationalising the mundane. Because in a way, that's what we do every week. Yeah. yeah. And we <laughs> mundanalyze for sensation. <laughs> <laughs> mundanalyze? Uh, it's got anal in it. So did like you it. know Cromulent... Uh, no, in Biggins is going to have a dictionary. Why? I did because I told you. Well, how? Yes, you did. <laughs> yes, sorry. No, it's I got not my being run. used, though, is it? Uh, uh, well, I don't know. A noble gotta... spirit in begins the smallest man. I mean, I know that. You have to wonder if I never heard that word before I moved to Springfield. Powerful, it's perfectly quote. cromulent. It's a perfectly <laughs> cromulent word. You have to wonder, like, how much of it is the Oxford English Dictionary just having a sense of humour, just trolling us, or is it like a self fulfilling prophecy? If you put in begin in the dictionary, it becomes a. Well, yeah, I mean, it's almost like you've got the most power, isn't yeah. it? Like, the guy who's in charge of saying what new words get to be, yeah. he's like a god. I I say in big and quite frequently. Yeah, anyway. yeah. But, but 
You were referencing that. Or are there yeah. enough... Are there enough oh, no, I Simpsons fans? Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> oh, I use it. Are there enough Simpsons fans of a certain age just out in the world now where it has... Probably. That's probably part it, of it. It has circulated. Apparently, uh, Garbage Fire is now... That's a great turn of phrase. That I is now love the, Garbage uh, Fire. And I used it just earlier in this episode. Uh, Griffin McElroy, yes. of who we are a fan. You keep saying, you've got to check it out. The okay. McElroy brothers are so I'm looking funny. at you blankly, but yes, um, okay. He, uh, I, I found an old Twitter argument he was having where basically uh, whenever people disagreed with him, because <laughs> he was basically it was like some outrageous thing that had happened, like someone had been treated very poorly, and he was saying like this is just monstrous and like you know we can't let this happen, and then people were saying ah but I disagree, and he goes this is your home now, and he does a picture of a sewer, and he just did that to everyone, <laughs> and people going like this is your home, and people going like actually I think you're fine. He goes that's a very good point. I hope you enjoy your home, <laughs> and there's a picture <laughs> of us. <laughs> You can just keep that going forever. Yeah, that's how you shut it down. Anyway, I've got a hate. Go, Go for it, John. Uh, Tell I'm, us your hate. I'm going to admit, it's a bit of a weak hate, oh, because uh... I'm uncharacteristically content at the moment. Oh. But. Oh, no. <laughs> this uh, is the end of the show. <laughs> well, it's been a good run. We need, we need someone else. <laughs> we uh, don't even reach double digits. <laughs> it won't last. It won't last. But I was walking uh, to work this morning. And I, <laughs> oh no, that's no, it. sorry, no. It's, I, and I was I like, hate that too. I was going to catch uh, an earlier train. I think I said Pokemon to get in, and I left the house. A child, <laughs> oh, he's back. <laughs> the long and short of it is, I left the house seemingly with good time to get to my train. Oh no, it's and train I'm walking. Is this trains again? We've had <laughs> trains already. Trains, We've had bloody right. trains. And I'm walking at a fair pace, and as I'm walking, I'm looking at my watch, and I realise I'm not going to make it. Like, I realise I'm getting up to the bit where there's a little hill, and you know mm. you're getting really close to the train. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm looking at the watch, and I'm going like, I have like two and a half minutes. Am I going to make it? Am I going to make it? Am I going to make it? And then you reach that point in no return. And I, I, and I got there, and the train was just leaving. God damn it, And God. I'm telling you, this is, this is a weak and slightly tenuous hatred, but I hate it when you are tr- you know it's... You know you've already lost. No, but I you know, can't and that's fair. Actually, stop. I like that. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. No, it, that's true because. Yeah. I'm trying to think of another example of it now because it's like you know I I I made the effort of walking there, and I missed the train, and the next train wasn't for a quarter of an hour, and but it's not even when I get there and see the train pulling away because that's you know that's disappointing. It was the approach. It was when I realised like I've been walking for like eight minutes. <laughs> there's only like a few minutes left I'm very nearly there I know this route like the back of my hand I know exactly how long it takes but I left the house slightly too late Yeah. and there is no escaping it but I can't just, what's, what's the option do I just stand there yeah. and just start crying I just stand you know there. there's no point in going back you know it's like oh this is great like I, all I can do is keep walking and disappointment waits at the end keep walking knowing that you're going to fail it's like uh, I'm bad for this I think I maybe it's just Generally, I'm quite good with timing, but I think if there's like certain journeys, like every time we used to drive down to Melksham Comic Con, we were always late. You like, were always with late. Without fail. Just could not do it in time because I somehow got into my brain. It was an hour away and it wasn't. It was always an hour and a quarter away. <laughs> like, that's, that's physics. Like You, could, you won't um, make it in an hour, John. Yeah. It's impossible. We could, get, we could get a team of scientists in and they could, you know, they could do the maths. And tell no, you, close. you are not going to make it. Yeah. But it's like, you know, it's, it's when you're kind of like racing the clock and you know you're going to lose. Yeah. The cruel inevitability. It's very hard to articulate. I've had a similar thing with football. Oh. Um, I remember a boxing day a few years ago. I was due to go to Stevenage v Gillingham, the glamour tie. Um, and I, I kept saying throughout the whole journey, this game's going to be called off. This this game's going to be called off. It's definitely going to be called off. What, has it not been called off yet? Oh, maybe it will go ahead. No, it's definitely going to be called off. And I kept going to and from, and we got within five miles of Stevenage, and the game was called off. Oh. I knew it would be. I knew. I kept saying it's going to be called off. But you I, couldn't. I'm telling you, you couldn't have not gone on that exactly, basis exactly because it was still on until that point. And yeah. how much would you have kicked yourself if exactly you'd gone, if stayed at home and then it wasn't and on. then we'd won as well. So, but I knew. I, every fibre of my being was telling me not going to be on it's yeah. going to be called off this game but I still went and I got within five miles and I spent my whole boxing day travelling to nearly Stevenage and back to Cheltenham right. and it was a well it was just a very disappointing how, game yeah 
Well, you sort it's of, not quite. It's not exactly. The were same. you in a car or in a coach or? A... Uh, I was on a train to Oxford, and then I got a, in a car from Oxford to near enough Stevenage. And there's nothing you can do about it. It's like there's moments where you dream for like teleportation, or you dr- you dream to just be able you just to. Just want f- the, this, the day to start again with the knowledge you yeah. have. Yeah, I think it's just because I resent I resent wasting time. Like it, it really. Oh it, yeah. It really annoys me, and it's like yeah. if you're in, it's like you've often kind of you've you've welcomed like the coming of driverless cars because you can oh, get gosh, stuff yeah. done while you're driving. I hate yeah. I hate wasting my time on being active in a journey. Like there's there's nothing more pointless to me than having to drive a car. Like get on a train. If trains were cheaper, more accessible, r- ran That's at all an regularly, trains are so expensive. I would anyway. I would just I would just throw my car in the in the river and Using that Hulk like yeah. strength of yours. It would take a few can only weeks. use it once. We live next to the river, and it would take me weeks to get the car there, but I'd do it <laughs> under my own force. I wouldn't fuel the car up. But yeah, no, no, it's just like I, I hate journeys, they're the worst. They're I agree. There's something that you know is futile, but you're doing it because it might not be. There's a one percent chance it won't be, and then it is. Yeah, yeah. This is this is actually very similar to something I've been doing at work lately where we have this client who doesn't brief what I need to make him. Oh. So I I know I've got to design a fly essay or something. And he's like, well, just knock something together. And, you know, you'll probably nail like 90% of it. We'll just make a few tweaks, send it out. And it's like, I always know that you will amend 95% of it. But until there is something in front of him, he won't tell me yeah. what he needs. So I spend three hours putting something together only to know that most of that work will be for nothing because... Like, he's going to tear it apart, but he needs something in front of him to tear apart. He can't just go from nothing and tell me what he wants because he's unable to articulate it. So, but then there is this tiny, tiny chance that I could just nail it. You can. But I won't because I don't know his products or his messaging as well as he does. And he doesn't, I don't know what he wants to say with this flyer or whatever it is as well as he will once he's seen what he doesn't want. So all I'm doing is spending hours making something he doesn't want so that he can work out what he does. It's the worst. It's not quite the same as your sort of running you, out of time thing. But do you feel like his his takeaway from that is that oh that Nick never gets it right first time? That's what I worry. Yeah, yeah, yeah it could be. Uh, but but it's weird because there's like there's like there's two people. There's the person who goes, oh yeah, no, I'm sure you'll get it. Like just do something, just knock it together, and I'm sure we'll be fine. And then there's the other guy who's like, no, no, it's all it's all wrong. It's 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 all wrong. <laughs> but then next time it'll be no, 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 you 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 do it. And uh, and, I'll, and I'll just tweak it, tweak the last end of it. And I'm like, we've done this, we've done this dance so many times, sir. And you know how it always ends. I look like an idiot. So why do we have to do it this way? <laughs> can we just this once? Not. I mean, like, can we? Could you give just, me a brief? Just tell me what you want. I don't think I've had a brief in nine years. To be honest. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Not a proper one. Must be pretty backed up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just let that brief, you know, squeeze he out. He just goes commando. Um, my second again, like I said, that was kind of like a weak hate. I very nearly put forward. No, 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 no. Two hates. You want, it's not really a, a double hate. I'm just You're saying. Like, a double so, I was going to say. You can't sorry. double park a hate, John. Oh, okay, I won't. Right, now we want, Everything's I fine. I've got nothing to hate. I want to hear it now. I'm really content that I have two hates. <laughs> Go on, John. Tell us what it is. It was, it was, simply, shit. It was simply going to be if we're on a kind of businessy, kind of ranty kind of thing that had uh, some. A rather awful meeting and it was just probably one of the worst meetings I've ever had and it was simply just a lack of communication. It was like four people in a room basically sh- just talking across each other <laughs> and just nothing is happening. <laughs> half an hour later we're none the wiser. You know, that's half an hour of work I couldn't do and now we go back in a worse state than where we started. Yeah, it's worse than when we started. <laughs> Everyone's like that. Well, let's times. just agree to disagree. Well, I don't I agree don't to agree that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's my hate. It's been a it's been a too joyous a week. I have very little oh, to talk about. Oh, wonderful. I'm sorry, guys. This is not the no, fire. That's fine. That's, come for. Oh, oh, that was all right. I thought. I oh, think you had worse. I wasn't. Oh, you definitely, you. you definitely had worse. Yeah. Oh, great. <laughs> I wasn't apologising to you either. I was apologising to our beloved listeners. Oh, oh, oh yes. Oh, we're recording this. Yeah. Oh. oh, oh. <laughs> um. Go on then. I'm going to sensationalise the mundane. Oh, Gasp. I recently purchased a puppy. Yes. You Relati- did relatively recently, and we walk her. Every day, pretty much. You're supposed moment. to do that, so that's good. Yeah. So uh, the, the well, the guy who sold the dog to me said, "You got a walker, you know." Yeah, yeah, I know. I know that. What? <laughs> four, four legs. Anyway, I walk the dog. Just to clarify, <laughs> uh, my hate is grumpy dog walkers, or or people who lecture you about your dog 
when you're on a dog walk. Uh, it's my dog. Dog etiquette. Yeah. Dog etiquette. Dog, dog etiquette. I'll give you an example. I'll oh, give you a couple no. of examples. Um, we yeah. walk Daisy, who is six months old, give or take, um, who is a black lab. We walk around the park and she's generally pretty good. She's she does nice little girl. puppy things and jumps up at people now and again. Some people get so arsy about that sort of thing. Like, she'd go off the lead and she plays with another dog. She accidentally sort of touches a person. And they just go... They just huff. And you're like, well, what do you want? Control your dog! It's just a lot of people who own dogs seem to hate them. Yeah. Like, you hate dogs in general. But Daisy in particular, because she's not violent at all. No. Also, it's an autonomous living being. Like, it's going to do what it wants to some extent. She's a typical puppy. And it's just sort of like, well, she's going to do that. I mean... She's like, oh, you need to train this dog. What do you think I'm doing? She goes to puppy classes. We spend every day training her to an extent at one thing or the other. Yeah. And she's pretty good. Yeah. I think. 95% good. You know. And it's just... And once she gave a woman her paw. And the woman jumped back in... in, (laughs) This is on Liz's watch. Jumped back in astonishment that this dog had dared raise her paw to her. Or you need to train that out of her. What fucking poor thing is? The thing is, I trained that into her. I'm going to yeah. train it out. <laughs> the thing is, what what could have also happened is that like Liz from behind saw Daisy, your dog, yeah. offer a paw and thought it's just a paw. We didn't see it from a lady's perspective. Could have had a knife. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, just, I'm just saying. She I knew you were going to say that. And it was yeah. still amazing. She has the she is the kind of dog who would carry a knife. It's like you know, little little knife. And then and then Liz comes running and goes, "What's the problem?" And, and Liz's like. Your dog's got a got a and looks down and it's poor. gone and it's just yeah. like well yeah. I, we can't rule out that possibility. Looks down, it's just Daisy's poor. Looks away, looks back. Daisy, <laughs> yeah. Daisy's giving her the finger. <laughs> She's the kind of dog who would do that. And She's then, a sneaky one. Does though. she come back with people's wallets? Not yet. Although I'm trying to train that into her. Or <laughs> <laughs> well, she comes back. That, that's a bad dog. Wink. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it com- comes back. Got like a little like uh, Nike wallet. It goes. Good, I mean, good girl, Daisy. But this is a crap wallet. Yeah, yeah. I want the good hey, stuff. Yeah. There's only loose change in here. <laughs> <laughs> I want drugs. But there, there are genuinely quite a few people around here who seem to just dislike dogs, despite the fact they are walking their own. Yeah. And it just, it's weird. Pe- dogs jump up at me all the time, and I get mud all over my trousers and whatever, and I'm like... No, don't worry about it. But the thing is, that's why like, I'm on a dog walk. A dog jumping up at you is actually kind of cool as well. I like it. Like, I, it means the dog likes me. It's and not, I like being liked. It's yeah. <laughs> I don't know about you. Yeah. It's not like it's not an absolute thing where just because a dog jumps up at you, it's a bad thing. Do you know what I mean? Like there are vicious, horrible, mean spirited dogs that either haven't been trained very well or are just vicious, and then there are really playful, happy dogs. And both of those kind of dogs jump up at you, and you can tell which kind yeah. of jump is which. And she's I like a, she's a, a nice super dog. friendly dog. She just is a puppy. Daisy's awesome. Oh yeah, and I, I check out her Instagram. Yeah. No, I, I check out her Instagram. Daisy underscore do underscore Labrador. Yeah. Is that a real thing? Yeah, she's got an Instagram right? account. Yeah, I follow it. Oh, well, I'm 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 the asshole. Yes, wow. you are. I don't I don't have Instagram actually. Well, you should. I just have it's a good char- Instagram account. I just have a slate. You have an abacus. Which I uh, I carve. I got some apps onto. in my abacus though. Ah, they're just new beads. So yeah, that's been. I think me and Liz spoke about it when we were at the pub before this podcast was recorded. Oh, I see. So you so you got a good old, good old head of head yeah. of head of scheme. Steam. Very yeah. Good. Thank it. you. That's thank it. you. Yeah. So that yeah, that's my sort of bugbear at the very least this week that no, people I just seem to be that. a bit miserable, and that that happened at the weekend. So. I can I can certainly to some extent I can sympathise because I know like from my own experience, certainly if you have like a smaller dog. Mm. It, you know, I say like a big dog it comes kind of lumbering towards you, and it's kind of like nipping and stuff. That's that's obviously mm. bad. But Daisy, of all things, like Daisy is is lovely. She'll jump up, and she, the, the worst she'll do is get a muddy paw print on you. But don't walk your dog in a field if yeah. you're worried about muddy paw prints. But also, if you, yeah, exactly. If you're walking your dog yeah. out in a muddy place, you're probably going to get a bit muddy as well. So that said, most people are pretty good because I was in not the park, a square near my house. Uh, and Daisy was playing with another puppy and she jumped up at this, well, she's about my age, woman, because I'm 32, jumped up and got two paw prints on, e- on either leg and yeah. she was like, oh, don't worry about it. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, that's good. So for every arsehole, there's a good person. Maybe maybe two good people to one asshole. And Hopefully. a dog with a knife. To... And a dog with a knife to, to like, you know, slyly pretend like she's upsetting someone by giving them her paw. 
<laughs> so there you go. And while that was going on, Liz robbed him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Which was amazing. laughs> and I, I had the car warmed. So, you know. <laughs> go, 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 go. <laughs> get in. Okay, well, should we get some hate mail? Let's do it. Do it. Okay, for your consideration from friend of the show, Cy, I hate work. peas. As well, in the letter? Capital no, or uh, lowercase? No, sorry, I mispronounced it. I hate peace. He's an angry man. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, no, he does hate peace. I, I, I hate He's peas. He's just had a baby, so he does hate peace. Like he you must say, do. <laughs> yes, that's specific, but they're just shite. I also hate green bell peppers. Is it the colour green that Maybe, Cy doesn't yeah. like? I mean, does he, does he dislike, you know, like, green peace? Well, we were talking about them mm. last show. Well, green is my favourite colour. Is it? That's interesting, isn't it? That is interesting. It's one of my least favourite colours ever. Green's my favourite colour. Because it means go. <laughs> no, I don't know why. <laughs> um, but I felt the need to reply to this message, as you'll see from cons- on the Facebook that you've got in front of you, John. Well, Because I, I, I hate peas also. Oh. Do you? Yeah. I, like I think they're futile I like peas. peas. I, no. Although I love pea soup. Oh, yeah, I like pea soup. Well, I, I feel you are confused. <laughs> Probably. I think you're wrong. Do yeah. you not get chunks in your pea soup? Chunks? No, because I deliberately mash them out. <laughs> Those chunks are peas. Maybe it's the spherical <laughs> where, nature of peas. Where do you feel about with. mushy peas? Uh, no, I don't like mushy peas. Uh, you see, I do like mushy peas. Mushy peas don't taste like peas. I think the no, taste... They're of... a different pea, aren't they? Peas, breed of pea. maybe. Peas so. taste just of nothingness, really. I like I like, But peas. I like the soup with a bit of ham. Ham and pea soup. I like a pea. I especially. <laughs> oh. Uh, I need a pea, actually. I like mashed potato with a scoop of peas in it. You're mental. That that is, that you, is, you just ruined mashed potato, my friend. Oh, but if you, if, you, if you stir up the mash, get the peas properly distributed. Oh, like distributed. allocated. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's good. I've never done that before. No, I, I think you've just though. ruined mashed potato. Oh, peas are amazing. Peas, I think peas are pretty great. When I. Uh, my Nining Tide, my Welsh grandparents, when I used to stay with them when I was younger, a lot of their food came in tins. <laughs> It was just they're ready for the apocalypse. Just because of, 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 of the war of that age, yeah. But we used to have these peas called bigger peas, at B I G A. Okay, like bigger, biger, 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 was did, was there one in a tin? <laughs> were they just like they probably a used to be head? they probably used to be actual peas, but they just like morphed into the shape of the can. Yeah, yeah. yeah it was, was it one green cylinder that you had on a plate? <laughs> just used to cut into it like gelatin. Yeah, you cut slices of it and put it in a sandwich. P. Yeah. Spelt, spelt with just one letter. It's like that pig on Family Guy with fists. <laughs> Oink. <laughs> <laughs> I. Uh, I once bought because uh, we often have frozen peas in the fridge. You know, we'd be lost. You put it in the fridge, in the freezer. That's what I meant to say. Because I'm. <laughs> Come sensible. on, John. Get I it know my way. Get it together. <laughs> I am deeply troubled. Um, no, we have frozen peas. They're good. Good with you know any meal. You yeah. boil them, get them out. It's wonderful. But um, I once bought like the cheapest like own brand bag of frozen peas, and they were like little ball bearings. Ooh, really? You could boil them forever. Oh, really? They're just like scones. It's horrible. Yeah. If you um, what's a good? Is it bird? Do birds eye? Yeah, do, birds eye do a pea. Do pea? They're do good peas. I love petit pois. Petit pois. They come in the little pods, don't they? The flat pods. I do believe they do. They do. The... Oh, they're nice. I they're, like that. They're sweet. Yeah, I know they're lovely. I had them like yesterday. Ah, there oh, you so go. You're not an exclusive pea hater. There you go. No, I hate. I hate. I mean, what you would define as traditional peas, like round, round, small, bouncing about, get everywhere. Yeah. I like I like a pea. I do, and I also like a mushy pea. Um, although I have them very rarely. We're we spending a lot of time talking about peas. And we're just long. giving. We're still talking about we're peas. We're giving people. <laughs> I think sensationalising the mundane has to be the episode title. <laughs> Let's move on to another one. <laughs> okay, uh, Imi writes. I passionately hate sitting on a warm toilet seat. Discuss. It depends who's been on it previously, though, or if it's deliberately warm. <laughs> well, this is it. Like, I went to Japan. Oh, oh, oh my Nick God. went to Japan. <laughs> Um, and they <laughs> they have heated toilet seats, as I think I may have mentioned on this podcast before, and they are delightful. Does Amy mean she doesn't like the thought of someone else's bare ass on the toilet seat? Now you seat? see, I can understand that. Or does she just not like a radiated toilet seat? Well, when maybe... I sit on a warm toilet seat, I picture a very large, hairy man. Sweaty has, individual. Yeah, has been sat there before me. Maybe we need to flip it. We need to flip reverse it. Uh, what is so good about a cold toilet seat? Nothing. 
if anything, is rather shocking. The only thing that's good about a cold toilet seat is the knowledge that someone hasn't been on it in the last five minutes. But then, I, but then, usually, if it's cold, it's my toilet seat, and I know who's been on my toilet seat. Genuine, I, you, I, I, I'd like to think, or I know. the dog. Genuine question. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it, it just occurred to me: in your later life, how frequently have you encountered? A cold toilet seat. As in not just neutral room temperature, but actually cold, yeah. like frigid. Is it just me, or was that more of a thing I don't... that happened when you were young? Uh, I don't think so. I, I try not to use council-owned toilets, if I can possibly help it. There was a toilet in Gloucester, oh, which was under <laughs> the oh, old God. fountain, which had been stripped of water many years before, um, which was just awful. Oh, and that yeah, was still always yeah. cold in there. You know the one I mean. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. think I ever, I ever did a number two in there. If that's nice, I probably did. Mm. I can't rule out that possibility. Was it like an old World War Two bunker or something? Why was it underground? It oh. it, there's this big. It's just a flat area of nothing now in Gloucester. It used to be a fountain, right? And there's the toilet to the right hand side of it, directly underneath it, oh. right by a pub. Actually, you had to go down like a kind of. It's like they've made an effort at some point to try and decorate it with concrete. So it had kind of like weird, kind of like wobbly concrete decorate shapes and like bricks at odd angles. And it just looks so depressing. It was really, it was a murder toilet, basically. It looked... The thing is, is, there's nothing on it still. They, they didn't put anything on it. It's weird space, that, in Gloucester. Anyway. There's a good segue here to another hate that we've got from Lucy. Yes, indeed. Uh, Lucy writes in and says she hates how when you are using a semi-public toilet or a, mm. in a workplace or service station when they have the uh, tissue paper dispensers mm. they only ever gives you one yeah, one sheet is, at a time that is a nightmare yeah I, I agree mean, with that who in the history of the world is going such an elegant civilised crap that one sheet is all you need one single ply one sheet one sheet does plenty like if I wipe my bum with that like it's going to be all over my hand yeah that's not good yeah it's 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 a non-existent yeah, barrier. I never really thought about it, but now that I now that I do, it's one of the worst things I ever heard. But like, <laughs> what? <laughs> so just I just like the makes, way you delivered it. It makes me feel guilty as well because I end up like taking like thirteen tiles mm. of paper in an attempt to just have a thickness bet good enough to shield my hand from my own feces. Oh no, I I I I, I demand. <laughs> I demand only the best, you know. I crack, I crack that thing open. I'm like, you know, I am not going in. You wipe, you just grab the roll, <laughs> you just yeah. wipe it no, up. No, because you know, it comes in. It's like it's like a like a Pez dispenser of tissue. It's like a stack. Yeah. I, I go. I am not going in through the traditional, you know, lowest ent- slot. entrance like a peasant. No, no. You know, I'm a I'm a king king of a toilet. I'm going in through the top. So you pop the back, open it. Just grab, grab a cube. Yeah. I just grab like a, a Minecraft brick of <laughs> tissue paper, and uh, uh, yeah. I go along the edge and uh, just I mean, stack it. I just, I just ram it up there, <laughs> and then just walk out, and I never flush. Yeah, we've reached that point where we're just talking about how we wipe our asses. <laughs> we, I mean, we, we've been here, we've been here before. I, genuinely though, something that annoys me. Um, the I think whoever fitted the facilities in the toilets in my workplace kind of like ordered one kind of dispenser uh-huh. and then purchased and continues to oh, purchase the wrong kind, the of... Wrong kind of paper oh. so it doesn't fit in properly oh. and also I think it comes in a when you unwrap it I think it comes in a brick yes, which like is a cartridge made, which is maybe like four inches bigger than the actual dispenser <laughs> so they kind of like condensed it and he's got like he's got a toilet mallet that <laughs> cool, cool. but essentially yeah they shoved it in and like you know you sit down to do your business and the thing next to you on the wall is kind of creaking and rumbling <laughs> I'm like oh god you ready know, to it? burst this is how I die <laughs> like, little, little kind of like spider web cracks kind of like running through the perspex you just wake like, up in a white room and there's a man sat there across me it's like John you are dead You're do like, you want to know how you died no, no. <laughs> yeah well, protocol says we have to go over it. I say, no. I'm going to play it back for you on this massive screen. <laughs> so you're thinking of the good place. I am. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's just, and, it's, and I think what annoys me the most about that is that someone clearly could tell on a daily basis every time they load that dispenser that there is too much paper to go in. And yet every day they ram that entire brick in, that breeze block of toilet paper. I don't want to sound like a dick, but I will. Okay, cool. Imagine that's your job and you've got that so badly wrong. But you just keep doing it day in, day but out. You, but you're so belligerent 
in your wrongness of stacking the toilet paper in a public cubicle that you're just well, well think plain about bad at that job. I w- yeah, sorry, Nick. The alternative is admitting you're bad at putting toilet but paper which is in worse, a distance. Admitting you've got it wrong <laughs> from the start and say, oh, I'm terribly sorry about this. Sorry, sir. Or belligerently sticking to your guns to the detriment of everybody I, around you. I have, I have, sli- I have a slight confession to make. I, I, I've kind of been in that situation uh, because when I used to work in the school lab, I ordered some wall mounted tissue dispensers. Oh, sure. And I ordered them based on what the picture said they would look like. And what, thinking uh, it would be a case of you can load like a, a cylinder, like a giant toilet roll of mm. paper in, and you tear out the cardboard roll in the middle. And then the idea is that you could just kind of like pull okay, like yes, a. From the middle? Yeah, pull like a, a continuous stream, like a magician of, of kind of tissue paper. And what I got was a. A tissue dispenser which which was designed to have the squares gutted, and uh, so you, technically so that's you not your. So in. we mounted those damn things on the wall, and every week I put a cylindrical roll of paper <laughs> into a square loading. <laughs> <laughs> but I felt so ashamed when I did it. Yeah, you should. And it did work just badly. Whereas, whereas the person who is shoving, like I said, a a, a two by four of toilet paper into this tiny little dispenser. It is crammed so tightly, you cannot even get, get the out. bottom sheet out. So you have to open the top and you have to take some out. Yeah. And then at that point, you're like, you know what, I am going for a luxury wipe. I am going to use the King James Bible of toilet paper <laughs> here. <laughs> I feel we're going off on a lot of tangents today. Also, give us another hate. Okay. Um, not necessarily sitting down on a toilet, but Philip writes in and says, I love sitting down. Wait, it's, it's especially on the mightiest pharaohs. Oh, oh, oh I, no. I'm sorry. Oh, love. That is king. Oh, I'll do that again. Right, we'll we'll just that rewind gag, that. I'll still uh, Phil, Philip, Gibbo. He, he hates no gibbo? different Gibbo. Different Gibbo. <laughs> different Philip. Come You're on, John. Okay. I'm having a. It's been a I think John may have been the wrong choice <laughs> to read the the hates and the loves. I hate brightly lit shops like Boots or New Look. Let oh. me scowl at your products in a dimly lit. Cave. I'll tell you why. I'm <laughs> not. Forget that bit of it. I'll tell you why I don't like boots and that sort of uh, lit shop. Because you get electric shocks in them all the time. What? Because of the lighting. In boots, if you touch, like, they've got, like, metal grates on their shelves and their screens, I get electric shocks all the time. I don't think you can blame that on the lighting. Yeah, no, it's the lighting and the atmosphere in the shops. Because there's loads of, like, electricity in the air. Because that's what light is. It's just it's just invisible electricity. Are exactly. You, you saying there's no? A but lot... you do no. All right, maybe it's right. not the lights, but you do in those sort of shops. Maybe I used it's... to work in Woolworths. Oh, when it was a shop. I used to work in Woolworths. There you go. Yeah. What did you do? I worked in the cafe. Did you? Lovely. Yeah, I wasn't. used to stack crisps and drinks oh, every Sunday, and I fucking hated it. <laughs> anyway, um, I used to get electric shocks when I used to stack the crisps all the time, <laughs> and it just pissed me off. All the time. It is a bit shit to go to work and just get shocked over and over again. It's like it's a job I dislike and I'm being tortured like every <laughs> yeah. minute of the, the thing day. is I ordered the wrong toilet paper for the public toilet, so I didn't have much choice what my next job would be yeah. after that. That's how they punish you. <laughs> <laughs> you now have to go work in retail and be electrocuted yeah. every yeah. every five seconds. Uh Kaylee writes, I hate the word banter. Yeah, banter. I do. Or when people say they're doing it for the bants. I feel like that word's come around so in, a, in such a way that it's used ironically now. You've got to hope, haven't you? Because Kaylee uh, concludes by saying, in my experience, people who say that are often being assholes and are saying something intentionally mean, yet passing it off as banter. Yeah, but that, that's, that's true of a certain sector of our society. But I feel like we, sort of, as in us three, yeah. might say it to each other sort of in an ironic or sarcastic way. Yeah, Taking th- the piss out of that sector. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. I think I think we do. I appreciate what what Kaylee yeah no saying. and I, I I can definitely get behind this because I feel like banter is really only a step away from <sighs> bullying bullying yeah for lack of I a... think banter is bullying that's what I was gonna ba- say banter is the gout of jail free card of the asshole well they think it is they think it is that's what they consider it. it's just banter mate yeah exactly it's just yeah. banter officer but like back in the day you're on when yeah. uh, when when you're bullied that's what bullies say they say oh no I was only joking but it's yeah. laugh. It's, like, it's the, it is the equivalent I kicked the shit laugh. out of you for 72 hours but I was only joking yeah I think yeah it does seem to be a good defence nowadays isn't it you could say something pretty horrible if you wanted and then just say oh it's just a bit of banter isn't it yeah 
Yeah, I feel that word has come around to an extent, though, in that that's been around for a few years, that word. There's it? a self-awareness to it now, certainly in how we use it, because I don't yeah. say it without going... Yeah, exactly. It's that, exactly, and that's clearly being over well, the top about it. Well, I think yeah. we're kind of lucky, because, again, I think such is the calibre of our friends that we probably do not surround ourselves with people who are assholes, and maybe we're... I, I make a point of not surrounding myself with arseholes. You know, present company excluded. Well, yes, absolutely. Yeah. But, Nick's um, not coming to my birthday party, so... You know. Hey, banter. He is, actually. No, he, not, but he's, he's not. No, he is. No, 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 we've, we've discussed yeah. this. It's, very, it's a very touchy God. subject. Yeah. I think, yeah, I think, like... <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I, th- I think maybe it's because we are lucky in that we don't have to deal with a lot of these people on a daily basis the kind of people who would use banter as an excuse so well. when so we can say oh it's funny for us because we use it ironically and i think we know the people we're with and we know it's all in good spirits yeah and you know i think it's like you know it's their cruelty kind of underlying it that's and... the thing that's the problem well tell you what here's a good one uh, i hate it when you're on series four of watching something on netflix then they take it down my God, this is a first world problem of a high school order. And that comes from Andrew Stevens. That hasn't, happened. That hasn't happened to me. Shit. Um, that no, sounds awful. I appreciate that would be terrible. That would be, yeah. But no, I can't say that's ever happened to me. <laughs> yeah. I, I, hmm. So, well, so is he saying he had more seasons to watch yet? Yeah. Like, he think... was on season four and there was maybe five and six to go and, he, and then he took it down? Yeah, I think we need like a bit more information about this. Andrew, tell us which listening. series. Tell us which series. Name and shame. We, yeah, definitely name and shame. We were talking earlier about how like we joined Netflix originally because there were a few things that interested us. Then it got a bit crap and they took away a load of stuff. Stuff did disappear. <laughs> oh, definitely. And yeah. then we didn't touch Netflix for a few years and then we came back again. It suddenly got really good. Now, now it's in its sort of like renaissance. Yeah, even um, if we do often end up in the Netflix paralysis where we just cannot decide what to watch and we yeah. just browse oh, I, yeah, I get that hour upon hour upon hour it's just flicking through it flicking through it could watch that I'll keep going there might be something better around the corner yeah exactly well tell you what good are they all the hates I think that's a good cross section of hate wonderful Nick you got a love uh, yes I do <laughs> <laughs> I forgot sure? what it was oh and he's here tonight with us that's lovely hold on Oh, I I've forgotten it again. Or, uh, in, in the space, well, this of that. is this is great at radio. Um, uh, what was Jesus. it? Oh yes, no, I remember. Jesus what it was. Christ! I remember what yes. it was. Now I've forgotten it. Must be a really good one. I hate it when my memory lets me down. No, I <laughs> <laughs> I That's love it when um, I've got a lot to do. Okay. Loads loads on the horizon. Loads of work to do. Um, it it looks a little bit terrifying. Looks a bit stressful. I'm thinking, oh no, this is this is this is three days worth of stuff. Oh god, this is stressful. It's all got to get done. I know what I'll do. I'll make a list nice. of uh, everything I've got to do. Mm, yes. Once yes. I've done that, problem's gone away. Yes. Uh, I no, don't actually. Do need, I'll then go make a cup of tea. I'll then go procrastinate for at least a couple of hours, uh, maybe more. <laughs> I'm kind of imagining like you know, oh my it's like it's 9am you're in the office like you know for some reason you're dressed like an 80s businessman and like you know you've got four phones all ringing like, oh, oh god it's all sweating it's all, it's all going wrong whilst and, trying to spin the plates in the corner it's the big day <laughs> and then like your boss comes in and goes Angel I need that report on my desk <laughs> yesterday I need the T111 form make it happen now <laughs> and you know and, and enjoy me for cocaine in the Annecy lounge and, <laughs> and then you go oh my god I need a li- I need a list and you just like you scroll down and there's a montage and you just you you scroll down all your problems and you go that's great and you just kind of float through the rest of the day and it's like that kind of 1950s (laughs) commercial shopping music like and you're just kind of moving around the house and and then it turns out the list is nonsense because all the cocaine (laughs) and then the boss just comes in and just goes well and you're like I made a list though you didn't do anything and then the credits roll the company's going (laughs) free frame (laughs) just looks at the camera the company's going under because of you and someone just shot Reagan (laughs) it's a nightmare the 80s are over the dream is dead yeah yeah and then but that list though yeah that list that list I do love it lists are good no I I agree wholeheartedly like a list is good I feel like I used to make lists and then maybe I was involved in a tragic accident and like like a a nuclear power plant exploded while I was holding my list and now the list has just been internalised yes man the human list basically yeah because now I don't need to your body is tattooed with just like to do lists yeah it's kind of weird like I went through the eye 
of organization Wait, and now i've come out the other so side what does this mean this means that that a uh, a terrifying perspective of tasks ahead of you now you sort of have an internalized list that you're able to like access or like, i Rain Man? or i kind of like uh, receive such a severe amount of brain damage that i no longer have any worry at all. Yeah. <laughs> you're just like, I forget everything. through life. I live in the eternal now, and it's wonderful. I am, there's only one bullet point on my list, and it is, it just says, B. <laughs> just I, um, you just point at it every day and go, yes. I have a, yes. yes, I am nailing this. I have, have a notebook, which is basically just lists. Ah. And so mon- I'll title a page Monday and there'll be a list nice. of everything to do. And then often I will, t- I will check back on a week and every day we'll have the same list on it. <laughs> I have done nothing, but I'm not stressed at all. Because it's all there. It's all there. I know what I've got to do. Like flicking through the pages, it's like you it's know, just... 50 bullet points per page. I was like, this is fine. This is, this is, sometimes have... another one adds in. <laughs> I have made lists before and I've gone at the end of the day oh, that'll wait that one that'll, <laughs> yeah. that'll wait that'll wait yeah. that's fine and the end, you're like hang on don't you do any of this today there, this there, is great there is a system uh, Lucy uses it the, the bullet, proper journal. bullet journaling I st- is I that what you that. do? well I've got my own take on that which is oh, basically right. identical pages <laughs> of ever growing lists so like you've got the, the <laughs> you've got the inventor of bullet journal going like Nick I understand the intent but you've kind of defanged the bullet journal it's not helping you at all I don't tell you how to live your life Brian <laughs> okay fine when he writes a bullet going uh, get over that put down yeah. and, uh, <laughs> and you, you cross the one off saying tell off Brian <laughs> yeah and we're all happy yeah that's a cross great no I lists are good yeah, lists are good. Yeah, they, you don't need to do anything. You just make a list. No, it's great. I think life life should be lived in lists. It's well, I don't know about that, but yeah. Final yeah, point, okay. you know, die. Yeah. It says here on my list, John's love. It's good one. I like do you like that? Yeah. Do you like that? Uh, I've had an odd couple of days at work uh, because I have been bouncing about a bit. Uh, I've been running errands. I've been doing. A, my job has been quite varied. I see. Which is interesting because I'm leaving it. Because it wasn't buried. <laughs> so, the last few jobs. Does. It's almost like they're just sending you off on errands now yeah, that you've or, quit. Or they're just winding you up, yeah. But uh, And I've made two trips to the dentist in the last couple of days. That I does went... sound weird, seeing as you work in something not at all related to the well, dentist. Well, my point is, I went out on my lunch. So I, I, had to, I had to do, I had to pick up some like new memory cards. So I made a shopping dentist. trip. From the dentist. From the dentist, yeah. I got this new grill. Kind of like, <laughs> <laughs> it's just one over each tooth. Help me. It's very painful. Uh, Micro SD, he's over each tooth. Gold. But my love is kind of when you go out wandering in the middle of the day and you have free time and it's unaccounted for and you're just in this kind of nowhere space. Now, now to clarify... Basically, every point in my life now, I always have a place to be, and I'm always kind of like doing stuff. Oh, that's true. You know what I mean? Like, I'm always kind of like, if I'm at home, I'm relaxing even, you know, or we're working on comics. Or if I'm at work, I'm working or I'm sleeping. Yeah. But it's like, the last couple of days, I had to uh, leave work on my lunch break and walk to the dentist. And that walk... Even though it was through Gloucester Town Centre, which is not the most no. glamorous of town centres, no. not so much. It was actually like really enjoyable because it's like here I am, and for the first time in a long time, it's a work day, and I'm just kind of out and about, and it's like I'm seeing like a whole new side of life. It's like <laughs> I, ne- I never leave the office, and it was really weird. Like it made me think back to when I was at uni and when I had so few demands on my time because God knows I wasn't learning. <laughs> you know, and like I had like no commitments or anything, and I would go, I would just kind of walk. I would make these long walks into town and stuff. You know, I'd go, I'd you know see a few people, kind of walk <clears> around, <throat> buy a book or something, and then and then walk home. And it's like, in many ways, honestly, that was quite a lonely time for me. I didn't have a girlfriend, you know, and obviously I wouldn't meet Lucy for several years. But there was a certain kind of freedom in a terrible way. Of not, <laughs> of not, of no terrible freedom. Uh, in in a, it was it's both freeing and terrifying at the same time. It's kind of yeah. like it's lovely that right now nobody has a demand on me. Mm. Like I I just have the utter freedom to walk to one place and walk back. And it was so odd. Like I found it incredibly liberating. Just like a fifteen minute. Walk. I can completely relate because this li- the exact same thing happened to me the other day. 
um, I on my lunch break, and normally I'm working here at home, yeah. and we had to, I had to go pick up the car from from MOT, and it was a decent length walk away. It was like I think it was basically 35, 40 minute walk to get to the car, and I told my boss that I was going to be away from my desk for that period of time to go get the car. Um, there wasn't anything pressing yeah. on that day, and so I left, and I had this forty-minute walk, and it was just me in my head, knowing I had the absolute freedom to take the exact or potentially longer amount of time required to do it. And in that time, I just mulled over this story idea that I've been having for something new that I want to work on, and I basically went from spark of an idea to whole like thing with first few stories and everything, like, and it was like the most fun. That I'd had in ages, like I was coming up with something new and I didn't have any demands on my time. And it was it was the snow day, so there was snow everywhere, and I was just crunching through this like cold air, but I was warm in my coat. And it was just I just had a really good 40 minutes, like solid 40 minutes. This is a weird thing though, because it's not like you just went walking aimlessly. No. It's like you had a destination. And that if anything made it. Yeah, yeah. It's weird. It's like it's weird, like, you know, as you say, you cleared it with your boss, I cleared it with mine. Yeah. Like everybody knows where you are. But they know, and you're not going that far. But they know they can't contact you in that time. No, nope. and they know you're otherwise engaged. It's just, it's oddly freeing. It yeah. was really kind of. And cool. if anything, it kind of highlights maybe how little freedoms we have day to day. Because yeah. as you say, we always have to be somewhere, always doing something. And even in our spare time, because we do so many things, we have so many projects and stuff. I often feel guilty if I'm not working on something in my spare time because it's like, well, I really should be getting a page yeah. done, or I really should be working on X or updating websites or whatever. And and so I never ha- I never get to enjoy those times. But when you can really like when you're walking, I can't be drawing a page. I can't be like I can't be doing like non work stuff, and I can't be doing work stuff. All I can do is just walk yeah. and think. That's all I could do, and it was amazing. Yeah, and it's true. And, and, and say I'd had a day off, and you and you'd said, "Do you want to go for a walk?" I probably would have said no. Yeah, because you've got stuff to do. Yeah, yeah. It's like because yeah. it's like no, this is my time, and I'm gonna. Yeah. But this was nowhere time. Yeah, this time didn't belong this to anyone. Was nether time. Yeah, it was like the other time. And it was it was great. <laughs> it was good. like, yeah, it's it's very very hard to describe because I think we nailed it. So many specific conditions. Oh, had definitely. To, like overline, uh, uh, overline, overlap, Overline's a good overlap. Word. overlap and overlap. align to make this perfect thing, and it was lovely. It was as much as I moaned about it earlier. Walking the dog is one of my favourite things to do now because I, for I, that I, reason, yeah, I, I'm able to process my thoughts and things like that. So I just feel a bit more. <sighs> do you have a set? Afterwards. Do you have a set route point. that you take? No, well, I plan my route on my way home, and then I take the dog. Ah, do you mix so it? Do you mix it I up? I mix it up every day. Favorites. I try to keep it interesting. So yeah, no, it's good. I love it. It's one of my favorite things to do at the moment. That could make me want a dog. Mm. It does. It, if it, I could inject that have, feeling into my life every her, day, which in itself is a thing to do, but I have to walk her and I want to walk her. Sure. But it's it's really good fun actually, even if it's just me and her. It's just fun. It's true actually. When I used to walk the family dogs, it was a lot of a lot of fun. It, get, you it gets you out it. in the fresh air, and you just I just feel a bit. Oh, and sentence, knowing there's a set, yeah. and knowing there's an ending to it. It's yeah. like you're not going to just keep walking. You know, no, gonna... well, I take her on. I take her on forty-minute walks after work. Roughly. That's pretty good. So, yeah, for a young dog as well. And I'll, you know, it's just good fun. It I is. think I think I'm in danger of being too in my own life. If you see what I mean, mm. like too set in my own head, and to free that and to break that and to just walk is actually incredibly liberating. Yeah. And I realised that when I did this walk, I was I was literally thinking about it for hours afterwards as well. I was still I was on a high after yeah. it. Yeah, it was mad. Yeah, it's really weird. And it, and the odd thing was, it's like for me. I uh, the thing I'm getting better at is that I I I always have this kind of like slight mania because it's like I was always kind of like pack things into every second of the day. Yeah, know? yeah. Even at work, you know, I might be thinking about another thing or kind of like answer a quick email. You know, kind of, I was always kind of like balancing a lot, spinning a lot of plates. Definitely. You know, and it's just like the idea previously of just and it sounds stupid, but my stress got to a point where the idea of kind of nipping out on a lunch break. Uh, to take a trip, which would take me the entire lunch, because I'd have to walk, you know, see the dentist, and then walk back. Sure. I'm like, on any other day, if in my old bad stress period, I would have been like, that's my lunch gone. Yeah. That's my lunch wasted. You know, and I see it as a bad thing. I, yeah, I would feel very bad about that. But it's like the idea that I could do that, come back, and then just shovel my lunch into my face at my desk. Yeah. And and then just get on with the next thing. I it felt like I don't know. I I feel like I mean, I'm. You know, I don't want to be the guy who's like, having such a good place right now. But I felt like, I felt kind of yeah. proud of myself. Because it's like, that was a really good walk. I feel so 
peaceful mm. at the end, even though the day is manic. And now I'm going to have very have to just devour my Back lunch into it again. super quickly because then we're on to the next thing. Yeah. But it was good. There you go. Look at us. Very good. Tell us your We're thing. growing as people. Well, maybe. You and I, and, and all three of us actually, are going to see Flight of the Concords. Yeah, we are. In a couple of weeks. I'm very excited about that. Very it's going to be great. about it. Psych. Um, so it sort of relates to that in that a high demand event, when you're, when you're trying to get tickets to a high demand event, and you log in, you get in, and you're in, and you've got them, and you've got those tickets that you're after, and you're going to see that thing that you really want to see, mm. or you really want to do for a high demand event, you're in. Bang. It's just a really good feeling that you you know it's, you're doing it. It's like you've won. I, yeah, like Glastonbury, for example. Yeah. yeah Getting tickets yeah. for Glastonbury. I think, sadly, there are very few instances in my life where I think that has happened to me. And mm. I would like there to be more in the future. Mm. And I think, you know, this year, you know, now we've got like weddings out of the way and stuff like that. It's like when you when you pointed out that the flight of the Concords were coming. Yeah. I think like there's a bit of me which had always been like, no, don't go. That'll be too much. You know, that'll just be like... I can't. Yeah. The stupid voice in my head is stupid sometimes, and it's that like is, you know. And it's like, oh, just stay at home. He like you know, prick. going out, <laughs> going <laughs> places, even to have a good time is stressful. You shouldn't. Do but it. but it's like I'm. I was thinking, no, I want. More. I can't wait. I think it's gonna be yeah. Fun. Oh, it's gonna be and awesome. and genuinely, like, I'm super excited, and I'm so yeah. glad we're going to it because I'm like, no, two weeks today. There's a lot of kicking off. I mean, your birthday, and then I'm your, not going to that, by the way. Yeah, it's and then going, your day. I decline the invitation. Then, and then your day. I'm not upset about it. Your day at the races. Yeah, Nick isn't, races, Nick isn't Nick's going to. Nick's not going to. I invited into that. No, he declined. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't give a shit. Uh, I can, <laughs> oh, he's a good friend. I can relate to this as well because when uh, we were going on a honeymoon to Japan, that's it. I've got it in twice. All right. Twice, Japan. But no, here's the thing because one of the things I've, I've wanted to do more than anything was go to the Studio Ghibli Museum in Japan. Um, that was one of the things I had most wanted to do when we went. And we the crazy thing was you couldn't book tickets until exactly three months before the day that you wanted to go. You had to do it on the day of three months before. It's insane because of how quickly it sells out. So we had that as an alert in our calendar in Japan time so that we would get an alert when the booking office opened. And I called and they had none left. Fuck. And I was like, what the fuck was I supposed to do then? Because like, I I followed this to the letter. I called you as you opened and you'd somehow sold out. And it was, it was, it was really, really annoying because I wanted to go so badly. Yeah. And like, and who knows when your next be there it's not exactly this isn't everything. something that's yeah. just down the road and i can wait for the next month or whatever so i spent a day basically like scouring forums and like reading about how you can get hold of a ticket if that doesn't work and it was basically a write-off it was considered like you couldn't do it but then there was this one there were these two really really like tenuous ways and so i tried both and they both paid off and i ah. had to cancel one of them and luckily i didn't end up with twice as many tickets no actually no that's, that's not true i tried to cancel it and i failed so i ended up paying for double but I didn't care at this point. Because you were just so kind of happy. Yeah, yeah. I, I couldn't cancel it for whatever reason, but I I could go. I paid double for it, but I didn't care because I could go. And that feeling of breaking through and knowing that I had it reserved and that we knowing were going to do there, this thing, do it. Yeah. It, was ju- it was a victory and it was fantastic. That is kind of... I mean, yeah, that's the thing. I, I think one thing I really want to do as like a kind of... Not like a New Year's resolution because it's not New Year's, but something I would like in my life. I would like... Their, to be more opportunities in my life where I allow myself to be genuinely excited yeah. about something. Because that's what it comes down to. It's like, if there's a thing yeah. you really, really want. Like, um, I think back, I think the closest I can remember to this was like when Avengers first came out. Oh, yeah. And yeah. I just remember, like, I mean, there was no doubt that you you were going to see it. Like, you know, there were going to be so many showings of it. It wasn't like tickets were going to sell out like that. But still, like I just think the the anticipation, the God, excitement. I was so That's it. It's the anticipation movie. ahead of ahead of an event. I was the same with Star Wars last year. Mm, oh yeah, I, I got yeah, I got yeah. up at six o'clock in the morning or whatever earlier than that probably to book tickets for opening night of Star Wars just to make sure I did. And then it turned out I booked Liz's ticket on the same day, and it was a seat next to me. So I didn't need to do it, but you know, <laughs> it was still that feeling that I was in and I was going to see it that day, and it was like yes, yeah. Question about the super exciting Flight of the Concords gig that we're going to. Hit me. Do you reckon, uh, what kind of event is going to be big? Is it going to be... It's a pretty big venue. Intimate, yeah. Do you think they're going to do like a story? Or are they going to just do something like a band? I wonder. I have no idea. I'm very very excited because I don't know what they're going to do. It's a new tour, obviously, and they've not been on it yet. Yeah, so there's going to be new stuff, maybe. It's going to sound that like I went to New Zealand. You see, I can talk about my honeymoon as well. uh, You can. I I, I accept it. Didn't see any of the Flight of the the Concords or uh, uh, Tiger Waititi. Yeah. 
who I learnt, went to university with them. Really? really? There yeah, you go. that's, that's how they know each other. They all went to the University of Wellington. And I think Brett is a little younger than J- Jermaine. Jermaine and... Uh, is it Tiger or Tyker? Tyker. Tyker. But I think... Tiger them, would be cool, though. Tiger would I, yeah. I think like those three and another couple of guys formed a comedy group called So You're a Man, <laughs> which was like their... So You're a Man. Which was kind of like a proto... Flight, Flight of the Concords, yeah. and then like Brett and Jermaine did their thing, and then of course Tyka got into like making movies and stuff. And Boy, did he! Yeah. Boy, how? And how? Yeah, yeah, and it's like it's just such a cool little friendship. That's it is kind of, cool. That's yeah. kind of awesome. So, do we have some love letters? We certainly have some love letters. Sai of the I Hate Peas says, "I love custard, radiator pants, and discovering a new series on Netflix." Okay, I'm gonna feign. It Forget gets. the other two. What are radiator pants? What, what the hell pants? are radiator pants? I'm pretty sure that he has terminolo- terminologized. There you go. Nice. And he nice. sensationalized the term- terminologizing. Yeah, as something that is actually just when you put your pants on a radiator. Oh. And then they become warm and then you put them on in the morning. I was kind of picturing like pants that had like a kind of ribbing. Yeah, built in. Well, here's the yeah. thing. Inside. There Come... are those. Oh. oh. Yeah, Ooh. because I remember on Good Mythical Morning, another great YouTube show that you should check out. Um, Rhett and Link review actual thermal pants and they look like puffer jacket shorts. Oh my God. And they have like a gauge, like a little box on the hip Ooh. with a little thermostat gauge on it. What? And, 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 then, and then also they snake off to be plugged into the wall. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> and then you can warm your, your, your loins. Although I'd be worried about my balls. Yeah. Because they're meant to be kept at a sort of proper temperature, aren't they? That's why they're outside the body. temperature. Exactly. I like it when pants are just out of the tumble dryer. Oh, oh yeah, straight on. Ooh, that's yeah. a good feeling. Yeah, it's lovely. Yeah. That's a good feeling. We don't have a tumble dryer. I do. No, we don't. Ah. Would you like to come and use my tumble dryer? I'd yes, like please. To, can I can hang out with your balls out? Head in the tumble dryer. <laughs> I will Donald Duck it until my pants are done. Yeah. Oh. What was his other two things? Custard and whatever. Why Custard. did he wear a wetsuit? <laughs> Donald Duck. Why did he used to wear like a wetsuit when he was underwater? Did he? That's a really good question. He's a duck. Maybe it's and he doesn't wear trousers normally. Maybe it's because ducks are so naturally buoyant. That he, he needs the weight. Yeah. Okay. And I'll, I'll, I'll accept that as an answer. Custard. And what was the other one? Well, no, I mean, I was thinking like custard. Custard's oh, fine. Oh, going to address Custard's custard. fine. Moving on. Yeah, I love custard. Okay. Yeah, custard's good. Don't like the powdery stuff though. No, I don't like making it from powder. Ambulation. It's pretty gross. Custard's fine. Moving on. Uh, discovering a new series on Netflix or any of your. As long as, it doesn't, as long as they don't take it off after four series. Is this size the third thing? Yeah, it's basically like, uh, you know, he loves custard, radiator pants, and eating custard while wearing radiator pants and watching a new series on Netflix. Mm. I, I mean, that does sound like a good evening. It is. Oh, God, yeah. Jesus. Yeah, I guess discovering a new show on Netflix. I feel like uh, we talked about decision paralysis earlier, and it's like finding that, finding something good on Netflix mm. is tough and rare but as long moment... as you're not righteous about it that I that he discovered it first God, oh, yeah. I remember one of my previous hates but if you if you strike gold and you're like oh this is so there is a certain joy in knowing that like there are like 20 episodes oh, of God, thing, yeah. which you just love well the last thing for me was Good Place yeah well Nick and, Nick and Alice recommended Good Place to me and Liz and We've enjoyed it thoroughly. Yeah, and you're devouring... That was outstanding. And you're devouring Voltron. Voltron's ace. As well. Really, really yeah, good. Really season five's out now. Watch Voltron. Now. Yeah. No, I agree entirely. No, it's just nice to know... You can just think like... Oh, you can watch that first episode and you love it and you know... There's like a whole day's worth yeah, of content. Yeah, to be fair, that's true. <laughs> and also, when you get that email from Netflix, which usually it gets it completely wrong. It's like, well, there's a new film on there that you might like. And it's just like... You know, failure to launch. I'm like, oh, <laughs> I don't want to watch that Netflix. What? You Are know, you I fan? watch Voltron every day. <laughs> hey, Nick, you like Voltron, so maybe you'll appreciate Matthew McConaughey. But yeah. before the McConaughey songs, <laughs> McConaughey brilliant. That's a thing. You like sci-fi and spaceships, and the title of this film kind of sounds like that. Yeah. So why not you? I like don't it recommended too? for Chris, and I think fuck you. You don't know recommended me. for Chris. Singularity AI you that is Netflix. You me. don't know my life. But that said, it, the other day it was like, hey Nick, hey Nick, hey Nick, open this email. Oh, really? why is that Netflix? Oh. Voltron season five. That so. oh, I mean, hey, that's <laughs> glorious. So no, that was pretty cool. <laughs> well done, well done, Netflix. Quickly ran up to sit at your desk just so you could flip it. It's like, oh my god. <laughs> Philip, uh, you may remember this one from earlier, writes, I love sitting down, especially uh, after a protracted period of not sitting down. From the mightiest it's pharaoh to the best. lowliest peasant. Well, Who doesn't enjoy a good sit? There it is. Yeah. The joke from earlier. I got this it in the end. Executed. I, I feel what we're not saying, like the elephant in the room here is 
we're getting old and sitting down is the greatest thing in the world. <laughs> Except when we sat down to start recording this podcast, it hurt my back. <laughs> Did like, you? Yeah, the actual yeah. act of sitting down was like, oh, that's really sore. I need to like... The thing oh, is, I, I like... Lock. Along those lines, I like getting into bed, but getting up in the morning, sweet Jesus, that, I feel awful. That can go fuck itself big time. I... I want to kick its shins off. When I wake well, up... Well, might you... <laughs> When I wake up in the morning, I I, uh, I like to lean forward and l- listen to the uh, ten gun salute in my back. Just uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it really is. It's just even getting out of my office chair. I've got like a little uh, support on it that I've strapped to the chair. Uh, it does nothing. It's mainly for show. It's <sighs> to tell everyone, look, I've got a bad back. Leave me alone. It's such a it's such like a cliche, but like you do sit down, you start making noises. You go like, oh, it, oh yeah. Oh. I don't know. I mean, I think I'm quite bad at sitting. Because you can probably testify to this, John, but it's like when we'll watch a film, I will change position probably every 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah. I will slouch, then I'll sit back up straight, then I'll slouch again, then I'll come off the sofa and sit on the floor and lean back on the sofa. Yes. Then I'll yeah. sit cross legged away from any sort of. Like, then I'll lie down for a bit, then I'll get back on the sofa. I can't decide or no, stay I, comfortable for any longer I, than 15 I, minutes. I'm very, I'm very much on the same page as you. Maybe like my fidgeting isn't as, stri- as extreme as yours, but I do shuffle and, and mm. move around. I think it's simply being in one position for any yeah. length of time. Yeah, it doesn't matter when you're My problem around. is if I'm in one position for, say, 45 minutes or more, I fall asleep. <laughs> If I'm not standing up. And yeah. sometimes even then. A we, simple man yeah. with simple pleasures. Which is why we have you on a rotating chair when we record yeah, the podcast. I know. I just, just so you can swivel around, around most of the yeah. time. I'm swiveling constantly. That's why I come off mic quite a lot. Whee! Well, tell you what. Let's end on a high. Uh, Andrew writes in and says, I love picnic food. It's like one of the best groups of food. Plus it comes with low slash easy washing up. That's very true. Yeah. Low to, to, I'm, I'm, to potentially zero. I'm down with that. Speaking of someone, I've who... had a picnic in ages. No. Oh my god! Well, the last time I was talking about this earlier because we we're sh- around the corner from our old residence, John. Yes, indeed. Yeah. Uh, and one week while I was living in that residence, I ate nothing but barbecue food. <laughs> I I ate outdoors the whole week because we put the television out of the back doors, facing out of the back doors, and we moved the sofa into the garden. Oh god! Yeah. And we watched the cricket all week. I do from the garden, that. In, and we had a paddling pool full of beers. The that way, is quite clever. It was, a, it was a very good week, but I couldn't eat any more meat after about seven days. The weather was fantastic, if I remember, if I remember correctly. That Jesus, was a great week. Yeah. We should have a picnic. We should do a show from a picnic. We could do that. Well, we've recorded episodes in the garden. We have? Yeah. We could do a garden picnic and garden do a show. Garden picnic, do the show. Ooh. When it gets a bit warmer, let's, let's do, do that. Let's do it. Oh, can you imagine? Outdoor. The picnic episode. We need it. Okay. Uh, Champagne. Goal, goals for this year. <laughs> Champagne. Uh, a picnic episode. Yep. Yeah. Uh, featuring the show. first ever live Death by Wasps on the podcast, <laughs> yep. and also our spa day. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Spa we want to do a spa day, I'm, don't we? I'm well up for a spa day. Because we work hard, we deserve to treat ourselves. Yeah, yeah, well, you know. I've been, sit- I've been sitting in this chair for an hour and a half. Yeah, delivering high con- high quality content, high quality ramblings. Yeah, great stuff, team. Well, wow. say what. I think it's been a good episode. I do also. He said, don't want to blow my own trumpet. Where do we stand? Did love or hate win out? I know. I've got an answer. Let's I think, all say it at once. I think... Three, <sighs> two, one. Love. Hate. Love. Outnumbered two to one. You never say love. I don't know. I don't often. Don't know. I, 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 I angry related to both of your loves in a, in a really big way this Okay, time. that's fine. I'll, I felt harmonisation. I'll go with that. I just, I just wanted to go with what I thought would happen. You always vote hate. I always vote hate. <laughs> <laughs> it's the name of the show. <laughs> it's not called That's a show. Fine. It's That's not... fine. That's oh, fine. A no. show called Purgatory. A show, crying. A show He's called, crying now, everyone. A show oh, called Compromise. Fine. What does it matter? <laughs> but no, I, I genuinely like, I feel quite uplifted. Yeah. I, I came in in quite a good mood and those loves have just made me feel even better. Yeah. yeah. It's rare that that happened. This could be like therapy. This could be working. We have said before that it might be just for us, just therapy for whether anyone else gets anything out of it. Yeah, care. I think recording it was a secondary thought. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> were the mics even on? Yeah. Oh no! Oh, test. No. They were on. Test. Well, I'll tell you what. It's been a good episode. Tons of love. We sensationalized the mundane, there and we go. mundanalized the sensational. Yeah, was Boom. Good. Okay, let's take us out. That 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 famous famous yeah. outro oh, that we love so the much. Oh, the Don't hate me for being real